Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 57 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of uh, a native coronary artery lesion intervention through a saphenous vein graft. The patient was an elderly man who had previous aortic valve replacement and single vessel coronary bypass graft surgery with uh, a vein graft to the right coronary artery 10 years prior. He presented with non ST elevation myocardial infarction and had severe peripheral different arterial disease, and there was no option for femoral access. For patients with bypass, going radial, left radial is the way to go, and distal radial makes a lot of sense for such patients because it's much easier for the patient to advance their arm over the bed. And this is the distal radial artery. It can be accessed either in the snuff box or even further distal from the snuff box. And there has been uh, a lot of experience with it. This is one of the first uh, CTO papers using distal left transradial, in which um, there was success of getting access in uh, almost 85% uh, uh, of patients. Diagnostic and geography was done. The patient did have a right coronary artery CTO. And he had this device, which actually is a marker for the symmetry device. That was a device that uh, used to be used for doing the anastomosis of saphenous vein grafts and bypass. However, it's not used anymore because there were high risk of restenosis and reocclusion. Nevertheless, it did serve as the marker of the origin of the vein graft. And after doing selective injection, there appears to be a severe 90% lesion in the PDA proximal to the uh, touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. So vein graft supplies the PDA. The PDA supplies a large posterolateral vessel, but there is a significant lesion, 90% lesion, right at the uh, origin of the left posterior descending artery. That was our target vessel. We debated about recanalizing the native coronary versus the native CTO versus just going retrograde to the saphenous vein graft. But because this vein graft did not appear to have significant disease, we elected to treat the osteal PDA lesion. We did have difficulty engaging with a multipurpose guide catheter. We finally used the multipurpose guide with a trap liner guide extension, and this facilitated engagement. And this is something with frequently two previous bypass patients using graft extensions that extend the reach of the guide catheter and facilitate engagement. The trap liner is similar to the guide liner. The differences are that the distal cylinder is short, which actually can be a problem as I will show you later on. And then it has uh, this uh, trapping balloon, which is uh, located uh, about 18 centimeters from uh, the distal tip. And this is uh, a marker for the trapping balloon when the proximal end of the trap liner is inflated. The balloon is inflated here, allowing exchanges of equipment. The second challenge here was wiring through the distal touchdown. That's a common challenge with saphenous vein grafts. And this can be facilitated using an angulated microcatheter. In this particular case, we use the Venture, in which by turning the knob, one can get up to 90 degree angle at the distal tip. This device was not available for a few years, but now it's back available for use. And this is one of the two angulated microcatheters we have. The other one is the Supercross that are pre-shaped angulated microcatheters up to 120 degrees. And there is a close-up. We typically use the 120 degree only because once the wire goes in, it becomes a little less angulated, about 90 degrees. And then the other trick for wiring through torsosity is using a little more slippery wire. So instead of a workhorse, one can use a hydrophilic coating wire or even more aggressive using a polymer jacketed wire. In this particular case, we decided to use a Sion um, composite core wire that has polymer, that has hydrophilic coating all the way to the tip in contrast to the Sion blue that uh, has the distal tip without um, a hydrophilic coating. So this is the attempt to wire. We have the ventral catheter close to the tip and that provides fairly strong support that allows the sion wire to go further. However, then 
keeps on entering some small branches. To overcome the challenge, we advanced the venture that was bent up to 90 degrees all the way into the touchdown of the SVG to the PDA. And then we got very strong support that allowed us to advance the Sion guide wire all the way to the posterior lateral. What to do next? Retrospectively, we should have changed for a more supportive wire, like an Ironman or a Grand Slam or a Wiggly wire, but we didn't. We just left the Sion wire, which was a 300 centimeter wire which is something important in those very distal lesions through bypass grafts because sometimes shorter wires may not allow exchanges of equipment. The ventral catheter was removed and then we predilated uh, with a small 2.0 by 15 millimeter balloon. There was some significant calcification into the target lesion. Balloon seemed to expand okay. And then uh, we decided to advance a stent. However, we had significant difficulty delivering a 2.5 by 18 millimeter stent. And on the way back, we actually had a lot of resistance coming back. And when the stent came back, the stent came back, there was actually deformation of the proximal edge, which is a common mechanism for losing stents if one pulls hard and the proximal edge catches on the guide catheter or on a guide extension, the whole stent can be stripped off. Fortunately, that was not the case in this particular patient. Given the difficulty delivery, we decided to use our trap liner, which was re-advanced. And you can see here the limitation of using a trap liner versus a guide liner. This is 13 centimeters long. And by being relatively short, the problem is that it went completely out from the guide catheter, which is a problem because we don't, have, we don't want to have a gap between the guide catheter tip and the entrance into the guide extension. Nevertheless, we pulled it back and that was enough support for delivering equipment. However, during attempts to deliver the stand again, the wire essentially prolapsed into the PDA having this big kink and this is how the wire looked after it came out. So we finally decided to change for a more supportive guide wire. We used the Caravel microcatheter and then through that we advanced a Grand Slam which is a very stiff body wire to provide us more support for delivery. And after doing that, we predilated a little more, at which, point, at which point the patient developed chest pain and ST segment elevation. And we have acute vessel closure essentially, likely because of uh, dissection into that area. The first step when that happens is to be extremely careful to not lose wire position because when a dissection occurs, the treatment is tense, but if you lose wire position, then it can be very hard to regain position in the distal true lumen. We predilated a little bit more, having the support of the trap liner. Delivery was not too bad, especially with the Grand Slam wire. And then after doing that, we were finally able to deliver a 2.5 by 15 millimeter stand that was successfully deployed. And then when we took picture, we realized there was a problem. This is our Grand Slam guide wire. And when we wired, we didn't have visualization because um, we were doing it through the caravel and there was acute occlusion of the vessel. But here, this wire is actually out. It's just in a small branch and it's probably out, which created a lot of concerns about perforation. Uh, but fortunately, we did not have perforation with extravasation after the next image. And this illustrates the likelihood of complications. In this particular case, we had all three types of coronary complications. We had acute vessel closure, likely because of dissection in the proximal PDA. We also had the perforation, although fortunately with just a wire perforation that did not cause uh, continued bleeding and tamponade. And finally, we almost had an equipment loss with the stent being deformed but fortunately, we're able to bring it back in before it got stripped off the balloon. In this particular case, this wire clearly needs to be repositioned. So we did advance once again the microcatheter, a caravel in this particular case, and then changed it for um, another long uh, Sion guide wire. And confirmative was in good position. We had some residual disease more proximally, and that is why we delivered an additional um, 2.5 by 23 millimeter dry diluting stand to cover the proximal part that was 
likely injured before from balloon uh, inflations and uh, that was positioned into the proximal part of the PDA, proximal to the touchdown of the southern vein graft, and successfully deployed. At this point, we thought that we might be done. However, there was a lesion that was pre-existing into the posterolateral vessel that admittedly we did not pay particular attention at the time because there was such a severe lesion in the ostium of the PDA. However, there still appeared to be significant lesion supplying fairly large territory, and that's why we decided to treat it. And we did the mistake of trying to stand it without doing additional predilatation, which um, resulted in inability to deliver the stand. We tried, but we could not deliver it, and um, there's no surprise given the calcification and the multiple bands that the stand has to be through. When we deliver through previous stands, uh, the wiggle wire can be extremely useful. This is a wire that has a uh, zig um, zigzag pattern of the distal portion and really can help you get off the struts of previously deployed stands and also provides very good support. And by using this wire, we were actually able to deliver a 2.5 by 12 millimeter stand, getting a nice result with Timothy flow into the posterolateral, Timothy flow into the PDA, and successful hemostasis on the distal transradial axis. So many lessons from this case. The first one is that for previous coronary bypass graft patients, going radial, the left is the preferred approach, especially if there is a lima, but also for the non-lima grafts, for saphenous vein graft, because engagement of those grafts is easier. And for left radial, using the distal radial is very useful. It's more comfortable for the patient and uh, facilitates the whole process. Second, guide extensions can help with graft engagement. The trap liner was useful here for helping with trapping and equipment exchanges, although retrospectively, a regular guide liner or Godzilla or telescope would be more useful, allowing even deeper intubation and more support. Third lesson, when trying to wire through angulation, there are two ways to improve that. One is to use a microcatheter, such as an angulated microcatheter, such as the Venture, we used in this case or the supercross and the second is to use either a hydrophilic or potentially even a soft polymer jacketed wire like the seam black fourth lesson having a stiff guide wire can really help with um, delivery as can having a guide extension fifth if there is difficulty delivering the stand it could be re removed without pushing too hard and if there is difficulty pulling it back one should resist the temptation to pull back hard, but also try to move it back and forth to make it come through the guide to prevent deformation and stripping the stand of the balloon. And finally, multiple complications happened or were about to happen in this case. Uh, one of them was acute vessel closure. Having the wire position maintained is critical for then delivering a stand and covering the section, which is the most common cause for acute vessel closure.